This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 440 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Reese is competing this week at Nationals, and Philip is helping her out. We wish her the best of luck. This week, we have a favorite for you from the Dressage Vaults. We think you will enjoy this episode from January 2016 with the amazing Stacy Westfall. The gang will be back next week. Enjoy. The sun is just peeking above the tree line as you walk into the barn. You grab your horse's halter off the hook and head out to the field. The dew shimmers in the sun as you walk across the damp grass. You call his name and his head comes up as he walks toward you looking for the apple in your pocket. You take your time grooming, enjoying the peace and quiet in the empty barn. A refreshing breeze greets you as you start down the tree-lined path. Your horse ambles along on a loose rein as you both enjoy a relaxing ride. The feeling you get on an early morning hack is why we do what we do at Kentucky Performance Products. This feeling is brought to you by Microphase. Fill the nutritional gaps in your horse's diet. Microphase vitamin and mineral supplement is a low calorie way to provide your horse with the vitamins and minerals missing from their diet. The horse that matters to you matters to us. Reese Koffler Stanfield from Loxahatchee, Florida. This is Philip Parks from Rockwood, Ontario, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. And we have our producer Glenn on with us today. Hey so guys, that's great. we're happy Hello, about that. Hello, everybody. <laughs> it's good to talk to you again in the new year. We, I, 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 the first time I've gotten the chance to even talk to you. I know it's crazy. It's already gone so fast. And you're already you're in my state, right, uh, Reese? I know. I drove by Ocala last week and waved. But we're we're here. We're finally here. All the horses are here. They everybody got in yesterday, and uh, we're going to get some sort of schedule. I hope started. Uh, that's a that's a hope for sure. Well, good. Well, we're looking forward to having you here. I would like to say you came down to the warmest time, but it just got chilly when you arrived. So. <laughs> I know. Well, <laughs> so. I, you know, actually, for, for riding, it's not bad. You know, we're, you know, I don't mind riding in a, a light, you know, sweatshirt and, a, you know, that's fine with me. So, uh, so far, it's been great. Not too hot. And yeah, course, nobody needs to Philip's sweat. bringing his shorts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah bring Phil's gonna, shorts. <laughs> Phil will bring his shorts. I know Phil's coming in this weekend uh, for the Trainers Conference. Uh, the USCF Trainers Conference. Um, if you have any questions, you can still. Uh, I think Philip, the the registration for the USDF Trainers Conference is officially closed, uh, but you can register at the door, and you can yeah. find information about that at uh, usdf.org. Uh, plenty of information about the Trainers Conference, and if you have a lot of questions, you're welcome to email me, and we'll get you to the right people. Um, but we hope to see a lot of people there. So Phil's going to come down next week. Do so some learning, yeah. And some butt kicking of me for sure. There'll be Maybe. some training going on. Yeah, might might be. Maybe just a little. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I can do yeah, that from my, a lot from of my fun. deck so. chair or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> with a drink in your hand. I we can <laughs> we can make that happen for sure. <laughs> with some uh we could get you some sunscreen when you're out there for sure. Well there's some cool stuff going on. We were just uh talking about the opening for the Global Dressage Festival and the first C D I happening yeah. today. It happened today, and I have to be honest, um, I, I had a student that did a fantastic job, got one of her scores for her bronze medal at second level. Uh, shout out to Laura. Well done. Uh, and uh, so I was over in the national part of the horse show and got to poke my head, poked in just for a minute to see the Grand Prix. It looked quite good. But I have to be honest, the results aren't up, and, um, but... Uh, I think there were 40 horses that started in the Grand Prix today. Big Grand Prix, yeah. Big Grand Prix. So it's really cool. And I mean, global, there's so much going on there. It's crazy. Um, So it was really fun to, to be there and to see what was going on for sure. Well, guys, I have a quick announcement from the Horse Radio Network side of things. 
We are very excited to announce that it's our ninth year that we're going into with the Stable Scoop Radio Show, which was our first show. That was our flagship show that Helena and I started all those years ago. We have dedicated the entire year to our listeners, to you guys. So we are calling it the Year of the Listener on the Stable Scoop Show. I don't know of any other podcast that has done this, but basically all our guests this year for all 52 weeks of the show are going to be listeners. So we are going to be getting you guys on. We believe that every horse person has a story, and it's our jobs to to find out what that story is. So I'm going to be looking for some dressage listeners to represent and come on the show. Tell us your story. And I will say that we the first interview, which is out now on the Stable Scoop show, is with Rhonda, who is out of Canada and is our legacy listener. How could we start a year of the listener without starting with Rhonda? Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's, she's a, listened to every episode of every show. 4,400 episodes. Uh, nobody else, as far as we know, has listened. I haven't. <laughs> I, I haven't. <laughs> So, you can admit it, right? Yeah, so she comes on. She's a dressage rider, not too far from you there, Philip. No, no, huh? We've met, and she, yeah, a <laughs> really uh, enthusiastic dressage rider and, and uh, a great listener. So it'll yep. be nice to hear from her. Yep, so you're going to. You know, one of the things we found is that the listeners really like uh, hearing when other listeners come on. So this is going to be a whole year's worth of that. As I said, I don't know that it's ever been done before in podcasting. So we're excited that we have the ability and enough listeners and uh, everything to, to do that over on that show. So so that's what's happening over on Stable Scoop. So are you going to need some yeah. volunteers? Yeah. How, do, how does one get okay, on that's, the show? Okay. That's what I was just going to say. If you would like to be on the show and, and, and let the world know about you and what you do and your horses, then just drop me an email at glenn at horseradionetwork.com and we're getting the dates booked up. I also wanted to mention the auditors. We had more auditors, new auditors sign up this week than ever in our history in the, in a week. Um, and that's partly because the word is getting out that being an auditor is fun and cool. The auditor's Facebook page, you guys see that, is one of the most active closed group Facebook pages I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's new photos awesome. every day, new they're talking Just to each talk other. About stuff. It's and it's I can barely follow it. It's I know. One, I love it. It's one of the most and this is what I want to say about our auditors. And I don't know if it's because they're horse well, that's not true of all horse people, but it's true of our auditors. Is it's one of the most positive groups I've ever seen. Uh, there's no negative that goes on in there, it, like you see in some other groups. It's just a positive atmosphere where a bunch of people are happy to be there. They talk about the shows. They talk about their lives. They talk about each other. It's just a really neat place. And, you know, they're auditors because they've chosen to just give a little back to the shows. And you can do that for as little as a dollar a month and become part of that group. And you get a bunch of other stuff, too. Uh, If you want to find out more about it, just go to dressageradio.com. And there's a big banner in the middle of the page on how to become an auditor for as little as a dollar a month and be one of the cool kids. And you get to get the blooper reel. Yes, you get the blooper we are, reels. Like, terrified of the blooper. Well, reel. and that's because you're most of the blooper reels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I love the blooper reel. Oh, it's totally true. We're so most of the blooper reel. I fall reel. asleep on the show or, yeah. or on you guys. Yeah. All the time. That's Philip, that's we have gotten more to use out of you for the blooper <laughs> reel than anybody else. It is so true, I don't everybody. I don't take, I don't take myself seriously, so that's fine. <laughs> we always know when it's getting too long of a show because Phil just spaces out. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, <laughs> let's get on with the show. Love it. <laughs> can, I, can I introduce the next guest, please? Oh, please. Of course. I just, because... She means so much to the Horse Radio <laughs> Network. When we first started that Stable Scoop show, like... Eight, not, uh, we're in our ninth year, so over eight years ago, we had about ten listeners, and we, you know, I I knew Karen a little bit from living in Kentucky, so I went out to connect Karen at Kentucky Performance Products, and I said, "Here's a dream. We want you to sponsor the dream because we ain't got nothing real yet." Uh, we just were doing shows, you know, and they were concept, fun. Yeah. yeah, it was a concept, and we were starting to build listeners and things, and she joined on then. And with Kentucky Performance Products, they have been our our biggest sponsor for the last eight years. Every week, in and out, they have not missed a a week sponsoring our shows. And I just want to thank her for that. She has been the biggest supporter that we could ever have had to start out. She believed in the dream and, you know, and she's ridden the wave up with us to now 130,000 listeners and one of the biggest podcast networks in the world. So I just want to say thank you for that. She's 
joining you guys once a month to do a supplement tip of the month. So I, I just am thrilled that, that you get to have her on your show because she knows so darn much. Well, so it's, it's a really wonderful resource to be able to, you know, talk supplements because that's a big part of, you know, what, how we help the, the dressage horses and, and athletic horses and horses that have a job. So um, listen in. Karen Eisberg with the Kentucky Performance Products Supplement Tip of the Month. Well, tonight we have the Kentucky Performance Products Tip of the Month with KPP, Kentucky Performance Products President, Karen Isberg. Karen, welcome to the show. Hi, Reese. Well, Hi, Philip. I, nice to be here. We are yeah, so happy awesome. to have you. We're happy to have you on. Well, Karen is fantastic. She is who we work with at Maple Crest Farm with our supplements, and she is a genius. So I'm so happy that she's here to talk to us um, today. We're going to talk about uh, this month, feeding supplemental fat to meet your horse's energy requirements. So Karen, that is already so I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we talking about? I love it. So can you get us started? Okay. Well, you know, nowadays, Um, We face a lot of issues with our horses. We've learned that um, if we feed them too much starch and sugar, so too much grains, that that it causes a lot of trouble in the hindgut, and it leads to situations um, like ulcers and colic and also insulin resistance. So we've learned from that, we've learned that we need to come up with a different source of energy, and that source of energy has turned out to be fat. And actually, Fats are kind of found all over the place. Um, did you know, Reese, that your pasture is anywhere from 2.7 to 4.8 percent fat? No, really? Yeah. So when your horse this is out is eating grass, <laughs> he's actually eating fat. Oh. And, well, and one funny. of the reasons why horses look so nice after they've been grazing out on grass for a while is because you know they're eating quite a bit of grass, so they're actually getting quite a bit of fat. Interesting. Kind of put that pretty bloom on their coat. And, and Karen, would that kind of depend on what, I mean, I was, you know, in Lexington, that's fantastic. You know, we have great grass, but what about different, you know, if you're out West or you're, you're in different areas of the country? Well, sure. I mean, and that, that would be a, that's why I gave you the range. It's anywhere from 2% to 5% fat, depending on your grass. So, I mean, if you're, if you're, you know, out in um, Utah and you're grazing uh, on out in the desert, you're obviously not going to get that kind of fat in your grass. But if you're in an area where there's a decent where there's a decent pasture grass growing, then you are going to get some fat in your grass. But a lot so of people that, don't is realize that like that there vegetable is. oil fat. Is that you know oils that are contained within the within the plant? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's what it would be. And then, so there's also some fat in your grass hay. If you get hay, if you feed your horse hay, it can be anywhere from oh, as low as one and a half to as high as three percent fat, depending on the grass hay. So your horse is always getting a little bit of fat in his diet, anyway. So it's something that they are they they would naturally be digesting. So it's something that they can digest. A lot of people associate fat mainly with you know, kind of animal byproducts and things. Animal fats, And they would yeah. think, well, yeah, I mean, a horse isn't ever eating fat. A horse doesn't eat fat. But it's it, that's not true. They do eat fat. They just eat vegetable sources of fat versus animal sources of fat. And, of course, we all know the vegetable sources tend to be a little bit healthier for you. Excellent. So now, so let's say like, cause here in Florida, obviously our horses, I mean, they go out for like half an hour at home, you know, they're out all day. So talk to us about how that changes. I mean, now we, myself, we have a big change in the horse's diet. So how would we, you know, kind of bring the fat back in or, you know, if we needed to have horses gain some weight? Yeah, absolutely. So what you're looking at then, or oftentimes, even if your horse is out on pasture, if you start working them harder, then, you know, they are, they need more calories, just like a person does. If you work harder, if you run hard, you need more calories in your diet. And your, you know, your haze and your typical concentrates that are high in starches and sugars, you can only feed so much of that. A horse has a limited ability to digest starch and sugar. And once you hit that limit, the starches and sugars are just passed through their stomach into the hind gut. And when they get into the hind gut, the bugs that are back there, they love that starch and sugar, but it causes them to produce a lot of lactic acid and it changes the pH balance in the hind gut. And that's where you get laminitis and you get colic when horses are eating too much starch and sugar in their grain. 
So if you've got a horse where you're feeding them the max grain that you can, um, starchy, sugary grains, and you're feeding them all the hay that you can, and you're still not meeting their energy requirements, then you can add fat into the diet. Or if you have a horse that's very sensitive to starch and sugar, you can replace those kinds of feeds with fat, and you can meet the energy requirements that they have. So tell us a little bit about sources of fat, because I know the, the you know the, the old, old method is just you know to get some corn oil and, and dump it in the grain. But I think there's only there's only so much you can you can add to the grain that way. What are what are different ways to add fats? Right, and corn oil too. Um, that is that was you know an older fashioned way of adding fat, and we've learned that the omega three fatty acids are important, and corn oil is very high in omega six fatty acids, which are pro-inflammatory. So if you were right. adding oils, you would want to add, yeah, the bed, you would want to, uh, to add a flaxseed oil or a fish oil that has is higher in omega-3s. But again, you can only get a horse to eat so much oil. Um, mm-hmm. one, one thing, one ingredient that we have found is really good for horses for, as far as a fat ingredient is rice bran. Oh. Um, okay. And rice bran, is, it's readily available. You can find it you know, a lot of places. Our particular product is called Equijoule. Um, when you're feeding rice bran, you want to make sure that it's stabilized because as with any fat, it can go rancid if it's not if it's not treated. Equijoule is heat stabilized and that stops it from going rancid and it's a natural process. So it's a natural product with a natural process of stabilization. Some um, rice bran products will be stabilized with... Um, chemicals instead so that's something to look at how would you um, how would you know that karen i'm sorry uh, jumping right ask. in you would, okay you would have to ask the manufacturer how they stabilize their ice cream okay or look for like we have heat stabilized on our bag so that it's easy for you to tell how it's done got it and then of course fat pr- provides almost two two and a quarter times as much energy as the carbohydrates so you feed a lot less and you get a lot more energy you can make your meal size much smaller. Is it is it, is it fairly easily digested by a horse? It is once the horse gets accustomed to it. Like um, when we talked about in the beginning, there is fat in a horse's diet naturally, so they have some capacity to digest fat. And then, of course, as with anything, you would introduce it slowly to the diet. And then, once the horse is accustomed to it, they digest it very well. Are there any uh, d- uh, dangers associated with this with this feeding? I mean, could you could you overfeed it? Well, like anything, I mean, if you overfed fat, you would you would get some diarrhea. Um, horses can tolerate up to twenty percent of the entire diet, the total diet, in fat. That's a lot of fat. Yeah, that's yeah, it is a lot of yeah. Yeah, that, that's buckets. You have to really fat. work hard to overfeed it. Yeah, got it. But yeah, you can. Um, some of the benefits of fat um, are that. Like we said before, the concentrate portion of the horse's meal can be smaller. You, you really never want to feed more than five pounds per feeding because that's about the capacity of the stomach. So you can feed smaller meals because it's more energy dense. Um, and that lowers the risk, of course, of any digestive upset. Um, feeds that are high in soluble carbs, which are the starches and sugars, they cause a lot of hormone surges. They, they burn very quickly. It makes the insulin rise very quickly and drop very quickly. And, you know, if anybody is, you know, if you've ever been hyperglycemic, you know how that feels. You know, when all of a sudden your sugar goes up and it goes down and you feel terrible. Well, fats don't do that. They slow, they burn very slow and steady and they reduce those hormone spikes. So it, horses that tend to be excitable, sometimes that excitability, like people used to say, oh, corn is a hot feed or oats is a hot feed. It was actually those hormone spikes that, that cause that excitability, and you don't get that in fat. Oh. So, Karen, um, what if you have a horse that's a really picky eater? You know, to, I, every horse I've had that's been skinny is typically a picky eater. How do you kind of combat that? Well, there's a, you can use combined products. Like We have a product called Endure Extra, which is a combination of rice bran and flax and some other concentrated fats. And you only have to feed four to eight ounces a day. Um, and we combine that with some um, pre and probiotics that will help the horse's gut 
to be, will help their appetite. They'll feel better, so they'll eat more. So that's the type of product that I would recommend if you have a real picky horse. Um, the Equijule rice brand is very well accepted by horses. It has a kind of nutty flavor to it, and they seem to really like it. Yeah. And I've had great luck with that Ender Extra. My picky eater, Zoe, um, loves it. And he he's really picky and he does a really good job. I actually had to call Karen and say, um, I think I need to back him off <laughs> the Endure Extra. Uh, and, and it's been a really, really helpful product for us, especially moving him around and showing he has a tendency to come off feed and, and he eats it um, really, really well. Well, Karen, thank you so much for coming on tonight. This was a great topic and I can't wait for next month's uh, KPP Supplement Tip of the Month. Uh, Karen, how would people find you online and find some more information about uh, just any supplement questions they have? Well, they can go to kppusa.com and we also have a Facebook page. So if anybody has a question to ask, they can go on the Facebook page. I monitor that pretty much all the time and ask their questions. Um, or they could also email us at info at kppusa.com. And Karen is fantastic. She will answer any question. And I've, I'm sure I've asked some really silly ones, but she is super easy to work with and is so, so good at this. So Karen, thanks so much for your time. And we will look forward to our tip next month. Thank you guys. Have a nice day. K. Gray's mission is to honor a woman's adventurous spirit by creating apparel that offers comfort while riding, plus style when you're not. In 2011, Grand Prix rider and entrepreneur Chris Pinto joined forces with fashion industry veteran Meryl Ranzer to create a chic and sophisticated line of performance riding breeches that look and feel better than your favorite pair of jeans. The line, made for women by women, is now being expanded and refined by teaming up with global equine manufacturer and distributor Intrepid International and notable fashion designer Kia Tomlin. 2K Gray offers serious riding clothes that are sturdy in the saddle, yet slimming, stunning, and sophisticated everywhere else. Each detail, from pocket shape to seam placement, is designed to enhance a woman's silhouette and to celebrate different body types. The collection is machine washable and proudly designed in the USA. Check out the new and exciting designs at 2kgray.com. That's the number two, the letter K, G-R-E-Y dot com. You can also follow them on Facebook at 2K Gray. Feel better and ride better. 2K Gray. Well, Mayor recently got her uh, 2K Gray breeches, and she's been wearing them out to the barn and doing a little bit of riding, and, and she is, she's loving them. Um, you know, I think they look great, of course. I mean, not just, not just Are they husband wife, approved? They're making her look good. They're making it look good. And and yeah, she she's uh really happy about, you know, being able to jump from the barn to going you know, going to the grocery store and not really feeling weird about wearing breeches. They I think they look very similar to jeans and, and stylish and yeah, she's I, she's you know, telling people are asking her about her breeches, they're looking good. Did you she know, get the ones with the little bit of bling on them? them you know? Do they have the little bit of bling on them? They got a little bling on them. Yeah. Not, she's very conservative, so she's got you know the 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 um, not so blingy bling ones, and and they look great. And she's very happy about her breeches. So thank you to Two K Gray. Very good. Well, we have an author coming up next. We have- and we do have an author and a fabulous horsewoman and a four-star judge. Janet Foy is coming on. And you can find her website uh, at dressagewithjanetfoy.worldpress.com. And she's come out with a new book. And I think you'll really enjoy kind of hearing about her story, becoming an author, and then also just um, how she talks about her new book, Dressage Q&A. This evening, we are so excited to have Janet Foy, U.S.'s four-star FEI judge and FEI trainer on the program. Janet, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks. Good to be here. We're so excited because you are also, with your many hats that you wear, an author. And we wanted to talk about both of your books. So can you start talking about the first book that you have written? Well, the first book I wrote was um, a book that sort of was a joke I always said, you know, um, I would tell my students and I would say, well, you really don't need to read books. You just need to 
uh, ride a lot in sweat and have wet saddle pads because all the books are written for perfect horses and yours isn't. So <laughs> this, book, <Right. laughs> this book is called Dressage for the Not-So-Perfect Horse. And it's written from the viewpoint of the rider trainer. And it talks about the different movements and dressage from training level through Grand Prix. And in the different movements, I list the different evasions that the horses can cook up. Um, you know, I've done this for 30 years, and I find that the horses also have a book of their own, and they sort of go from plan A to plan B to plan C. So I've listed their evasions, and then in the book, I list exercises that um, will help improve those particular issues. So it's a, it's a good training manual for the rider. They can um, ride and say, oh, gosh, I'm having... Uh, tilting in the shoulder, and I wonder how I fix that. And um, there's actually a great index that lists all the movements, and it says under shoulder and tilting, go to page uh, whatever, and there it is. And it gives you all of the different exercises that um, should improve that particular issue. Um, so it was a great book to write. Um, it gives also the benefit to everyone of all the fabulous people I've worked with over the years, and I've worked with some of the top people in the world, and um, given, I, you know, no one invents anything new, really. We just sort of change it a little bit. <laughs> so, um, it's it's a great um, a great book to just sit down and and read, and, and also take with you to the barn. It's also available on Kindle, so you can have it in your barn or on your phone and, and quickly look. And I've, I've had a lot of people say they they carry their phone along with them when they ride so they can look up the different exercises in the book. So <laughs> that would be think, perfect, I yes. think that's fun. Yeah, exactly. And Janet, so um, so it's a great book to have with you on, you know, at the barn, at the arena, especially if your trainer isn't there. Uh, how, do, how would our listeners find the book? How would they find it? The book's available um, on the Trafalgar Press website, which is the publisher, and it's also um, at the top of the best-selling horse book uh, list at Amazon, so you can get it um, either place. I think a lot of local dressage stores also carry it, um, but if you just Google dressage for the not-so-perfect horse with Janet Foy, it'll come up and give you all of the different places that you can purchase the book. So... Um, I hope that, I hope they get one. It's a hardback book, has tons and tons of pictures, and the pictures um, are really near and dear to my heart. And I had to go through scrapbooks from years and years. Luckily, <laughs> I was a scrapbook kind of person. Um, but all of the pictures in the book are actual pictures of me riding or my students riding or horses I've, I've trained and worked with. So it's it's for me a memory book as well, a way to preserve all my memories when I'm old and in the nursing home I can look through the book. <laughs> that <laughs> and is really remember all those neat. great adventures. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. So now you've also written a second book and, and you told us off air and you have to tell us on air um, that you weren't going to write another book and then this mm-hmm. one came about, right? Right. I didn't really want to write another one. It's so time intensive and the editing process um, was very, very intensive. And I had a great, great friend who helped me edit the first book. And so they kept saying, oh, please write another book. And no, no, no. And they kept shooting titles and ideas. And um, they, they finally got around to one with questions. And they said, let's just get hundreds of questions and maybe that will inspire you. So it did because we have the second book, which is called Dressage Questions and Answers with Janet Foy. And it, it really was fascinating. We had five or 600 questions that came in from the different Facebooks, mine and the publisher at Trafalgar. And it was very, very interesting. I had no idea how I was going to set the book up. I did know one thing I did not want to do was have pictures because that the first book um, was so, so difficult with the pictures and getting them all into the right format. So um, I said, well, let's, let's do drawings. I have a student who's a great artist and, and we'll just do a lot of drawings. Um, And I think in a way that's good. I, I see so many problems with 
pictures that, uh, you know, on the internet, you have one split second moment of time and, and 200 people criticize the horse because the pole's low at that moment or the mouth is slightly open at that moment when it was the only moment in the entire eight minute test that happened. So <laughs> it's, it's very, very difficult. Um, to find pictures that really represent 100% of what we want in the different movements. It's much easier just to draw the little horsies. So <laughs> we, we got the questions, and as I went through them, I started to realize the perfect format to do the book would be the training scale. So that's basically how the book is laid out. Um, it's laid out according to the training scale, and it um, also I started with a little glossary that um, I, one of my sayings always when I'm teaching is keep it simple because I think people try to make dressage too complicated, and it you know it it just doesn't need to be that complicated. So I have a first chapter of a glossary um, with common sense dressage and. Um, probably the biomechanic people are laughing at my um, definitions for certain words, but hopefully it's logical and common sense. And I think that that is important um, that we don't, um, for example, we talk about crookedness. I just talk about the horse being a choo-choo train. I like it. Having, I've ridden that horse. I've ridden the, the choo-choo train. <laughs> right. And having the different cars uh, going around the curve without any of the cars derailing. So, um, you know, giving, making it simple and giving a good visual for people to think about instead of, um, you know, all of these big long words that really... Uh, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's really important for a book because... You can write entire chapters on on certain, you know, uh, movements or a certain idea that you want to talk about. But I think the easiest is to break it down to, you know, a visual or or something that somebody can can imagine, sort of something tangible that you can talk about, and then move on from there. Because, um, of course, like you said earlier to us, is you know every horse is a little different, and and every concept you can apply differently to a horse. But when you're when you're reading a book and you're sitting down, you want to have something, you know, very simple that applies to most situations, I think. Yeah, exactly. Of course, you can't cover everything, but... No, um, I mean, that book would horses. be too large, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I also really wanted to cover um, learning, uh, both for the rider and for the horse. I I find so often when I'm teaching that the rider expects the horse to do something. And I said, well, how did you teach the horse that's what you wanted? In other words, I, I, I tell them, you have to think of your horse as teaching a child to read, that you teach them their ABCs and then words and then simple sentences. And then finally they get to read a book of C. Dick and Jane Wren. And of course, anybody under the age of 50 looks at me like they have no idea what I'm talking about when I <laughs> talk about Dick and Jane. Yeah. We get it. We get it. I know. I'm going to have to come up with something else now when I teach these kids. But um, I think it's, it's amazing because they say, well, the horse should understand this. It's like, well, how? You, you think he's in college? You haven't taught them, you know, the basic tools. They they have to, you know, understand those aids. So there's a chapter there on um, how horses learn and how horses think and um, a, a little bit about their actual scientific learning that has been studied. And then about how riders learn and different styles from teachers and, and riders shouldn't be upset if they they can't learn from every teacher the same way. That's normal, I think. Um, you know, some teachers push, 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 and and some students do well with that. And other students just um, you know hide and cry and get upset and leave. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there's so many different styles of teaching as well as learning and. Um, the other thing I touch on is it's a difficult subject too is teaching feel. I think it's very it's impossible to teach somebody. We we say it all the time, Reese. I know you do too. 
Do you feel that? Do you feel yeah. that? Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> somehow we're hoping that, that but that's, yeah, think, that's making yeah. sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's a, that's a difficult, um, uh, you know, we can give them the tools and if you do this, the horse should do that. But, um, I, I think you're always dealing with, with people who are trying to learn what the right feeling really is and, and then be able to repeat that feeling. So that's what they learn. And I don't know about you, Janet, but one of my, my pet peeves of, of that is if somebody says, do you feel that? And I know some students are like, oh, yeah, 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 I feel that. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, yeah. I do. oh, yeah. And I'm like, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't feel it, say it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell your instructor. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> That's a pet peeve. Of mine. <laughs> yeah, isn't that a funny thing? Yeah. I yeah. mean, everybody wants to achieve, right? Yeah, everyone yeah. wants to be like, I got it. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait. If you don't, it's okay. Ask your instructor. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> so, I know. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's a hard problem. You know, it's, it's, and, of course, then you have green riders with green horses, and they're, it's going to be very difficult for them to get the right feel yeah. because that's just not how it works. <laughs> so exactly. the idea of, of starting with a, a schoolmaster is always, I think, an important part of learning to ride so the horse has some idea of what you want and can help teach you a little bit along the way too so um yeah so that was i i enjoyed writing those chapters and um you know i I hope that will be helpful to the teachers and also the students and then it was interesting when you get to the, the what people have the hardest thing understanding um and it it's never impulsion um, and I always say, you know, any pony cutter can kick the horse and make it go. And that's the the difficulty, I think, 30 years ago when we had those old, heavy worm bloods that were like one generation separated from the plow horse, <laughs> they were the laziest, dullest things. And I think at that time, it really was about impulsion because they were lazy and they didn't want to go and they had no tension really in their brains or their bodies. They, you know, you could bounce on their back all day long and they could care less. <laughs> but <laughs> the, the modern horse, which is, you know, thoroughbred Arabian, hot, 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 um, bred to be sensitive, athletic, um, quick, um, very forward, yeah. very, yeah, very forward, very smart. Now there is tension, and now there is tightness. And um, so I think everyone has to look at the train scale and realize that technically submission comes first, and then impulsion comes second. So uh, we, we always have a little saying in the judge world, the, the more impulsion you have, the more submission you need. <laughs> and um, I think... Contact is always a big issue. There's still people in this world that teach um, you need more weight on the outside rein, and if you just throw the inside rein away all the time, you're going to have it. Um, and so I think there's a big misunderstanding in the country that contact, um, that's not what it is. It should be the same amount of weight in both reins, and both reins have separate jobs. But um, if you just throw the outside rein, hold on to the outside rein a lot and give the inside rein, the neck's going to get shorter and shorter and the horse is going to get slower and slower and you're never going to bend in the correct direction. So um, that was interesting. Lots of questions on contact and and heaviness and, and a lot of misinformation that if the horse is light, it means that your reins are loopy and you have no contact. And um, I think the term lightness needs to be talked about in relationship to the balance of the horse and the lightness of the shoulders. And often some of these big, powerful horses can have three to four pounds in each rein and be incredibly uphill and light and free in the shoulder. Um, so, you know, again, misconceptions, things that um, are confusing um, lots of those, lots of those contact questions. I think probably more contact questions than anything. So, and that um, makes sense. I mean, contact is it, it is it is one of those things, kind of like the 
feel, once you sort of learn and understand it, it makes more sense. But as you go through or if you change horses or as you go through the different mm-hmm. levels, it can get confusing on, on what it should feel like and, and as the horse collects, you know, what happens. So that's fantastic. I can see why that would be a huge part of the book. Yeah, I and I just, nobody really talks about the shoulders. I mean, they do in Europe. Um, the judges talk about it. The breeders are breeding horses with super long forearms, so the shoulders are 10 times freer than they were back in the old days. I mean, it's a whole different conformation now um, in the shoulder and the front leg than we had 30 years ago. And there's still, yes, the hind legs are important, of course. That's where the energy comes from. But um, you just can't whip on those hind legs and get collection. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> you know, um, it's, 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 it's a process. And I think um, straightness is also very, very misunderstood. They, everybody thinks that if the horse is straight... Um, They should be like an L and be stiff. And nobody talks about the line of travel and and that the hind legs are on the line of travel in every movement except for um, haunches and and half pass. And those are the only two movements that put the forehand on the line of travel. Every other movement has the hind legs on the line of travel with the shoulders slightly displaced, and that's what straightness is. and when I say that, people look at me like, whoa, that's really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, but you know, it is good. To, and, exactly. It's it's good to talk about and read about it. And, and even just reading it um, in your book, maybe somebody can get it. Their trainer's been saying it to them, but you say it's slightly different. Or, you know, some of my students read really well and they'll read it and be like, oh, my gosh, this I read this. And I'm like we talked about that yesterday, but <laughs> yeah. I, know. So I yeah. tell them, I yeah. said, of course, there's always an exception. And then you talk about the one tempi changes, piaf and passage. Those movements can be totally straight like an L because both hind legs are carrying the same amount of weight, but we're not going to work on that today. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> um, because you're really only doing second level. So you'll get there eventually, but that horse is, you know, very, very strong. And, and so we, for our, you know, for where we are, we just need to think about shoulder forcing. That's a real good thing to think about. (laughs) I love it. Well, Janet, thank you so much for coming on our show. And uh, once again, how do our readers find the books? Um, They can go. Google is a wonderful place. They can go to Google and they can, type in dressage question and answers with Janet Foy, or they can type in uh, dressage for the not-so-perfect horse with Janet Foy. Or easier still is to go to the Trafalgar Press website. And how do you spell that? Amazon. I'm sorry, how do you spell Trafalgar? T-R-A-F-A-L-G-A-R. That's like the square in London. Fantastic. Well, Janet, thanks for and coming. And exciting for me. I have one more thing I want yes. to say. I'm very yeah, excited. I just found out. My first book has been sold to Europe, and they're translating it into foreign languages. So that's that's, oh, that's huge. Very I'm very that's happy with that. That's so. awesome. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Well, yeah, we have some international listeners, so they'll be able to get it soon in their countries as well. Well, Janet, thanks so much for your time tonight. You're and welcome. We're looking forward to thank having you. you back on. Okay. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Welcome to BedInABox.com, where you'll find the most comfortable, pressure-relieving memory foam mattress at only one-third the cost of the leading brands. We have created an exclusive memory foam that sleeps cooler, rebounds quicker, and cradles your body in pain-relieving comfort better than other types of memory foams. Introducing our new memory foam technology. By swirl-infusing gel into our advanced memory foam, we have created an even cooler, more comfortable sleeping surface. Best of all, it's made right here in the USA. He had been dealing with back pain and chiropractor visits for a while, so we decided it was probably time to find a new mattress. So we started doing some research on memory foam mattresses and found bendabox.com. We were on a trip with some friends, and they actually had a bed in a box mattress in their camper. And on their recommendation, we decided to get one for ourselves. They got it to us in no time. We had no problem adjusting, and we were thrilled with the comfort. In fact, my husband doesn't have to get up early anymore due to back pain. He can lie in bed for as long as he likes without any discomfort. 
We recommend Bed in a Box to anyone who has back problems or just needs a good night's rest. We believe we have created the world's best memory foam mattress. Using independent accredited labs, we have tested our mattresses against the industry leaders to ensure comfort and durability. Test results show our mattresses relieve pressure better than the more expensive ones found in retail stores. Buying a mattress over the internet may seem risky. That's why we offer a 120-day zero-risk return policy. You get a full 100% refund if you're not satisfied. No hidden fees and no return shipping charges. And we back them with a 20-year warranty. Sound too good to be true? Don't take our word for it. Read what real customers are writing about us on Facebook, Twitter, Viewpoints.com, and other third-party review sites. We are dedicated to quality and service. We offer fast, free shipping to the contiguous U.S. Your mattress will arrive conveniently packaged and will be ready to sleep on within minutes. With the benefits of the leading brand mattresses, but at one-third the cost, why wait? Start getting the best sleep of your life. Call, chat, or email one of our friendly customer care agents to learn why 99% of our customers sleep better and toss and turn less on their new bed-in-a-box mattress. Well, today for our Total Saddle Tip Trainer Tip of the Week, we're going to have Stacy Westfall talk about beginning her dressage journey. This tip brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, the shoulder relief girth that Reese and Philip both love. And here's why. The saddle fit solution you have been waiting for is finally here. TotalSaddleFit.com is proud to introduce the shoulder relief girth. This strategically shaped girth actually moves the girth line of your saddle back over one inch, thereby freeing your horse's shoulders from the saddle. Traditional girths pull saddles up against a horse's shoulders and often over the top of the shoulders. The shoulder relief girth's recessed ends allow for the billets to buckle into the girth farther back to give your horse unparalleled freedom of motion. We are so certain that your saddle will fit better and your horse will be more comfortable that for a limited time, we are offering a 30-day, 110% money-back guarantee. If you are not totally satisfied with your shoulder relief girth, send it back for a full refund plus 10% of the purchase price. Don't wait. Order now for the best saddle fit solution available. At TotalSaddleFit.com. Visit TotalSaddleFit.com. Well, this evening, I am so happy to have Stacy Westfall on the program. Stacy is um, a very, very famous writer. She was the opening act for the World Equestrian Games. She is in the Cowgirl Hall of Fame. She's the only women, woman to win Road to the Horse. And if you have ever seen her on YouTube, she has millions of downloads from her bridalist and bareback riding. Stacy, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> well, th- we cooked up this idea because you'll have to kind of tell everybody the story. But um, we have been working together for the last several months. Um, and you um, gave me a call. You moved to the area. And uh, mm-hmm. I'll let you take up the story. Yeah, so maybe we should label it like Confessions of a Rainer or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I guess I like that title. I, can- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I confess I'm mostly known for my reigning or, you know, the natural horsemanship cult starting, but I've always wanted to know more about dressage. And, you know, I don't know if I told you, Reese, but I grew up in Maine and a long, long, long time ago when I was little and my mom was like, we should take some lessons. We went to a place called Hillside and took some lessons from, um, okay, from the interns and stuff at where Michael Poulin was. Oh my gosh. And yeah. we would go and we would watch and we'd watch these amazing horses and we'd get on the lesson horses and, and be like, I don't even know what a lead is. <laughs> <laughs> and so way, way long ago I saw dressage, but now I'm just getting around to really trying to figure it out. I love it. So you called uh, a couple months ago and said, Reese, I really want to learn about dressage. And that's mm-hmm. when I said, Stacy, I really want to learn about reining. So <laughs> <laughs> you're doing much better on your transformation than I am doing on mine. I'm not going to lie. Um, but so let's talk about kind of your start in dressage because it's really, really fun. And we, we laugh a lot, if anything. Uh, we have a very mm-hmm. good time, especially during my lesson, which is really 
Stacy's much better than I am. <laughs> I will tell you that no. right now. <laughs> no, I think, well, it was kind of interesting. Um, one of the times I came up, uh, a young lady came with me and I loved the comment that she made. I wish I could phrase it as well as she did, but she had been watching me and, you know, at, at the barn and watching me ride my horses and, you know, trying to figure out this dressage stuff. And she was watching me struggle. And, and, you know, I don't know if a piece of her was starting to think, I don't know this Stacy Westfall person. I don't know about her, but it was interesting because we came up and she was watching you trying to figure out some of the stuff with the raining. And she was like, this just really, when we left, her comment was beautiful. And I wish I could get the phrasing right, but she was like, it's so inspiring to watch people that, you know, are really good in their own discipline, reaching out of their comfort zone and trying something new. And she said it was refreshing to see that it wasn't just easy for us. Yeah, <laughs> Which I it's was like, hard. Hmm. It, it really it's is. It's really hard. It's really hard because your body, you know, so one of the things that, that we've learned about raining versus dressage is dressage, we're much more specific about where our body is mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. versus yeah. the, the raining. So that's been one of the challenges with you um, is teaching and, and working on how you sit and being very specific about how you use each of your body parts. Yeah, uh, for sure. For sure. That's been hard, because, right? Yeah, because with the raining, it's sort of about like if you can get it done. So the riders can have a quite a bit of variance in how, you know, so for example, when people run their circles, some people like to stand up in the stirrups and really lean up over and and they'll call it like chasing. They'll have their hand more than halfway up the horse's neck when they're running the circles. And other people will sit deeper in the saddle and, and you know, kind of lighten their seat, but they'll still be like basically sitting back on your pockets and chasing the horse in that circle. And it's like two different, completely different styles of how you can run it. And it doesn't matter. It's judged on the overall how well the horse performs it. So for sure, um, it's been <laughs> definitely eye-opening because, you know, I come up and, and it gives me a lot of places to analyze, hey, how why do I have this habit? That's that's something that I do a lot. Like, where is this coming from? Why do I use it? And I should be able to have more than one tool. So I should be able to do what Reese is telling me, even if it's not the most natural. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things we found was um, your outside leg, right? Mm-hmm. That, that, was a, that was a big thing is you want to use your outside leg, especially around the, the corners. Um, yeah. So that yeah, was, that was think, issue for straightness, right? That became a, a huge problem uh, versus right. what yeah. we were doing. Yeah, it's interesting because um, the the horse that I'm riding is a reining horse that also does like ranch riding and stuff. And it's interesting because um, the some of the things he's been rewarded for doing, he's also searching for. And so it's interesting because I've got, my baggage and then he's got his baggage and we show up together and I'm like, Oh, this is exhausting some days <laughs> because, you know, we, in, in a lot of our maneuvers, except for our rundown to our stop, um, you know, we're largely on a circle, uh, for the, for our, I mean, we'll walk to the middle, do spins each direction and then we'll lope off and we'll be three circles, one direction, three circles, the other. And then we are, you know, doing a big horseshoe or straight lines up and down running and stopping. And because of that, there's certain habits that you learn and get into that work for your discipline that don't necessarily, I'm learning, don't necessarily cross over quite as perfectly. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's been interesting. So Stacy, just a quick question. Are you, uh, uh, are you an English tack? Oh, yes. Um, Bridle yeah. and everything. And t- let's talk about that's an interesting thing, isn't it, Stacy? <laughs> so let's talk about trying to find a saddle because that was that was a big thing. It was. It was interesting because you know um, I don't know anything about how the saddle is supposed to feel, and so I think my first lesson, I think I did everything in Western tack, correct? Yeah, I think. I think you- yeah. Well, no, you had and an English th- bridle and a in a Western saddle. And I had my oh. lesson in a Western bridle and an English saddle. It That's was very right. Funny. We, were both, we were both half and half. That's right. yeah. I think I have a picture of this somewhere we may have to post. Uh, yes, I think we, and then, and then I went out and I kept, I kept trying. I do really enjoy that a lot of the stores will let you take a used saddle and, and use it for a week to try it out. And between that and riding in different borrowing saddles and everything, I finally, chase down one that 
I liked, and I was really, really happy when Reese said I'd done a good job. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. It looks really good. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, Stacy, kind of tell us um, what's your what's your next goal? Because I think we're going to have you on uh, kind of periodically throughout the year to kind of see how your journey's going and and what's going. So, what's the, what's the next goal? Okay. One of my main goals for one of my next lessons with you is that when you see leg yield, I automatically know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. It's we'll just, it's crazy. Some of these little tiny things are driving me slightly crazy because um, it's like if I, if I watch a video on it or if I go do it without thinking about the label, like, you know, I, there's, I can control the parts of my horse's body. But when you just tell me a term, the terms don't just lock in my head. And that's a little bit frustrating because it obviously gets in the way of something that it, it just, in a way, it feels silly to be running into that at my stage of life. But it's the truth. And so that would be really nice. And then it's a little, being it's able just to a little different language, right? Yeah. Well, it it's is. Like, when I have my lesson on Sia, you know, you'll, you'll tell me something you're like, okay, we're going to, we're going to work on our spin. And I'm like, huh, what do we, uh, you know, you know, like, I'm yeah. like, uh, completely uh, like blows my mind. I'm like, well, what do you mean? You know? So it is, it is hard. And, and learning the actual, you know, we all think in dressage, we know like, okay, we, you know, I say leg yield and whew, off you go. But you know, again, it's learning something new. You know how to yield a horse. I mean, you do it all the mm-hmm. time. It's just right. What are the and different? I think, and I think that's where in at home when I'm riding, nobody's saying leg yield or doing whatever. And so in my mind, I'm thinking I'm going to move my horse towards the wall. I'm going to move this way, but I'm not thinking in the terms that you use. So it's little glitches like that that make the lesson's not as smooth as they could be because I'm like, oh, wait a minute, which one's that again? <laughs> I'm going, yeah. this, is, this is just silly at this point. <laughs> no, yeah. it's true. And we um, we also did a little test riding because we have some shows yeah. at home. Uh, so what was that like, your first test? Um, terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> not terrifying. Come on. Well, well so what happens is, is I see it all the time. One of the reasons I love doing this, um, a few years ago, I took up, I, I did um, mounted shooting. And so I showed in mounted shooting for a few years, and that was a whole new learning curve. And so completely different discipline than anything I'd done before. And there's the fun thing about signing up to be a new learner in a new discipline is it helps you remember when you're teaching what it's like to be learning. because it was fascinating me again, as I'm writing this test and I have to say, I love that somebody can read the test. Because yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell you exactly where the, to go. They can. Although at home I've been practicing so that I've got them memorized without that, because <laughs> I, I know from my reigning experience that I need to know my test so well that I'm not thinking about it, that I could be thinking when I end this free walk, I want to pick up on my inside hand gently so my horse doesn't look resistant. I know I need to be thinking about how to ride it, not where the letter is. So I've got to get to where the pattern is second nature, but there's a lot of repetition. Hey, I got to say, if Stacy could add shooting to dressage, all the <laughs> horse husbands in the world would be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, well, so, you did, did a great job. Yeah. Well, thank you. And we and we had to talk about what's the difference between sort of training and practicing for the horse show. That was our last lesson. Was we we rode through the test start to finish. We had to we did it a couple times, which is normal. Um, and and really just to talk about what's the difference there between the two. And um, so that was really fun. Uh, and uh, you're going to the horse show next month, right? Uh, February. That's my goal. That's one of my goals. Yep. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Well, Stacy, we are so glad you came on to do the confessions of a rainer, but actually you're you're (laughs) really, really good. And it's super fun for both of us. Uh, you know, it is, it's very hard to learn a new discipline, especially when you're set in, set in your ways in your discipline. So it's Mm -hmm. been fun to to help you and to be a part of it. So Stacy, how do our listeners (laughs) find you online? They can find me online um, either on my Facebook page, which they can search for Stacy Westfall, and it's a fan page, or um, westfallhorsemanship.com. 
fantastic. And I have to, yeah, I have ahead. to thank you again, Reese. Thank you for, um, like when I made that first phone call, I was so nervous. Like, oh, I've got to confess that I'm a rainer that wants to take dressage lessons on my raining horse. But thank you for being excited about it and not, you know, making oh, fun of me. Oh, I, I feel the same way. I mean, you know, exactly. We're doing the same thing. Like, I'm serious. Stacy is way better and actually much more dedicated to her dressage learning than my reigning learning. But I'm trying. And uh, it is. It's really hard to do something different and to stretch. And, and I think all good horsemen do that. And, and so that's why we're both uh, working together. And I feel the same way because I'm, like I said, I'm way worse than you and you're way patient. Oh, with- no. You're going to come <laughs> back from Florida and all that warm weather and riding. I'm going to be freezing up here. You're, you're going to be spinning circles and doing all kinds of things. I don't know. Do they allow rainers in Wellington? Is that... Uh, from- <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, I don't know. If we- well, we're, 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 gonna, we're switching. We're kind of working on our, our Western dressage until I have more assistance with Stacy because I, I really don't know okay. what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but uh, it's been super fun and, and and we'll keep everybody in touch with our journey and uh for sure stacy we'll have to uh check in next month on how the horse show goes yes that will be interesting <laughs> <laughs> thanks stacy we'll talk to you soon thank you guys see you guys later well, as always, we love listener feedback. We love emails, Facebook shout outs. Uh, so Phil, we actually have a, um, a question, an email question that we don't need, we don't really know the answer to, and we're going to need some help. We're going to, yeah, we're going to need the help from our listeners, you know, to, uh, to give this other listener, uh, some advice. Um, so I'll just go to the email. It's a question for Reese and I, um, about somebody who has an opportunity to go to Ireland in September for, two or three weeks for a horse vacation. Um, she would like to take some dressage lessons there and she needs a recommendation for a farm or instructor. So we're going to throw it out to our listeners out there in the in the internet world to give us uh, some recommendations that we can pass on to this listener about riding vacation in Ireland. So um, any help would be very much appreciated, I'm sure. That would be great, and we would love that. So you can find our show notes and links to today's guest on our website, dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook, just search Dressage Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. If you have a great suggestion for the Ireland trip, you can email me at reese at horseradionetwork.com, and my website is maplecrestfarmky.com. You can find me at philipparksequestrian.com and my email is philip at horseradionetwork.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week for allowing us to put on a great show. And don't forget to check out all the other shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Everybody, keep your heels down and your shoulders back and we'll talk to you next week. (laughs) 